everyone. Welcome back to my next video. As you can see, this is a little bit uh, different than my normal video. I'm in my van, and uh, so that I don't have a bright light behind me, I have a black curtain. I'm sitting on my bed, uh, and with me is Devin. Devin, say, go ahead and say hi to folks. Hello. And today we're talking about cats. I make it a point only to talk about things I'm pretty knowledgeable about. And cats in a van or an RV are not the thing I'm knowledgeable about. So I found an expert. And Devin, you are an expert on cats in a van. Would that be fair? I'm an expert in my own mind. In your own mind, yes. So cool. And we most of us are in something. Uh, but you've had cats in your van now for two years? Yes. And uh, so you, you've you learned a lot of the ins and outs about having cats in vans. And so folks, we want I just want to uh, go through and ask Devin some questions and, um, and let you know the things that will work by trial and error. And, um, and because I'm kind of ignorant on this topic, I, haven't, I used to own a cat probably 40 years ago, so my knowledge is not current. Um, so Devin, why don't I just turn it over to you? Um, I love my life in my van. Um, I, it's pretty simple. I don't have a build. I just have rubber made containers and a bed on top of them. And, you know, it's, it's pretty rudimentary, but I have literally never been happier in my life. Um, the biggest problem uh, that I had, I, I used to laugh with my friends, you know, I don't care if all I have is a bucket and a bed, I'm getting in that van and I'm leaving on this date. And I did. Um, but the biggest problem I had was concern for my cats. Um, and that was like a two years worth of research, trying to find the best options that I could find um, to make sure that my cats were safe. And so I've tried to do that. And so tell us the, uh, the ins and outs about uh, how it's worked with your cats in the van. So uh, you have a, first, do you have any social media where you talk about your experience with cats? I have a blog. Um, I haven't been writing lately. Uh, I've been very busy trying to get my daughter transferred from one side of uh, the West Coast to, to the middle of the country. And so I haven't been writing, but I do keep up with my Instagram. Um, it's spelled a little funny. It's probably better that it's in the, in the notes, uh, afterwards, but it's eccentric nomad. It's spelled X S Y N T R I K nomad. Um, and that is the Instagram as well as the blog. Okay. And you have a blog post, uh, going through this whole uh, issue that, and how you've lived with your cats. Yeah, yeah, it's pretty extensive. I tried to include everything that I would have wanted to know when I was starting because there wasn't a lot of information out there. And it was a huge concern for me um, because I believe that my pets are a lifetime commitment and not disposable property. And that's my personal opinion. I don't, I'm not trying to impose that on anybody else. Um, and I've made mistakes in the past and I don't want to do that again um, as far as, you know, having living situations where I uh, had to rehome a pet. And I, I want to make sure that I'm being responsible now. And I knew that I couldn't go in the van without my cats. So I, I tried to make the van living situation the best I could um, for and, and safe, primarily. Their health and welfare is of utmost importance. Um, an animal can die very easily in a vehicle. And if you're not careful, especially in the summer. So it was imperative that I make sure that I did all the things that I could to protect them. So in your blog, you, st you start out with saying the first and most and most important thing is to know your cat. And mm -hmm. so to know, to be prepared, as prepared as possible, because it's the great unknown moving into a van with a cat. What are the things a, our viewers should be watching to know about their cat before they move into a van? Um, you need to know, the first thing, the thing that I think is most important um, is know how your cat behaves as far as its running tendencies. Does your cat tend to 
chill out, lay down, or is your cat extremely curious and always trying to get out? Or if they're always trying to get out of the house, you're going to have a problem. Um, if that cat's constantly curious and trying to run, you could be at a gas station, that cat could jump out of the van and cats aren't prone. There are exceptions to every rule, but cats aren't prone to come when called. Um, like I have right now in the van, I have two cats. I have my cat Basil and I have my daughter's cat, Holly. Holly's overweight. Um, she's not as active. She is more prone to be affected um, by temperatures. Basil can probably handle 10 degrees hotter than what Holly can handle because of her weight and her health issues. So there, there are a lot of factors that you have to keep in mind um, and you have to, you kind of have to know your cat. Right, right, very much so. So the big issue for every cat owner, and I get a lot of people that ask me about cats, and, um, and because I'm not a cat expert, I can only relay my experience with uh, the number, many, fair number of cat owners that I've known. At, a very high percentage of the cat owners that I have known have lost their cats. So you're, you are uh, mostly a, uh, a boondocker, Devin? Yes, um, mostly urban at this point. Uh, and then the dangers are substantially different. You know, out, in the, out when you're boondocking, the dangers are uh, primarily coyotes. Yeah. Um, and and uh, birds of prey. Actually, birds of mm -hmm. prey are surprising uh, risk to cats. A lot of birds of prey can get the cat and take it away. Uh, and so your dangers are mainly traffic, I guess. Someone else finding your cat and adopting it. Is that right? Yeah, absolutely. But either way, once the cat gets out, you all you can do is hang around and hope it comes back. And hope for the best. Right. And so uh, what have you tried to do about that? You, Freddie, you knew was a, uh, a cat that wanted to escape. Did, was there anything you could do or tried to do? You know, I took every precaution with Freddie and I, we realized our worst fear with Freddie. He did escape. Um, in, the, in the short time, he was in the van for uh, probably six to eight weeks. Um, and we, when we were moving and we knew doors were going to have to be opened, uh, we kept him in a carrier. It was a soft-sided carrier. That was our first mistake, I guess. But when you're in a van, you have limited room, so you have to have something that you can um, fold up and put away when you're not using it. So we had a soft-sided carrier, and he, we thought he was in it, and it was dark, uh, and we opened the door, and he had escaped from his carrier. He was a black cat with some white on him, and he got out. We didn't even see him get out. We drove away. We assumed he was still in there. We drove away to our night spot. We, uh, I zipped the carrier. It was dark. I zipped one end of the carrier. He had gotten out the other end. We didn't pay attention if he got out of the carrier. We got in bed, and then I realized he wasn't coming to get in bed with us, and it, it was just, it was, it was, um, there were a whole lot of errors on our part. We thought we were doing the right thing. Um, we knew that he was prone to escape, and, and he just got out. But, you know, had you lived in a house in Flagstaff, uh, every, every cat owner is the, whose cat tries to run, and that's, I would imagine, a lot. It risks and he, that. yeah, he ran out of the house when, when we had an apartment. Um, my, he stayed with my daughter at first when I first got on the road because I, I was real hesitant to take him because of his running. And um, he would run out of the apartment then um, and come back um, because he knew where to come back to. The problem is when you're in a van, they don't know where to come back to. Right. It's always different. It's always the first time he'd been. Well, it's not always, but often it's the first time he's ever been there. He doesn't know the lay of the land. He hasn't learned it. And the van's gone. So where yeah. does he go back to? Um, so um, that's something you really have to give a lot of strong thought to. Did you think about uh, a leash? Uh, that's what a lot of people do is they leash train their cat. 
Um, yeah, you know what? And that's, that's one place where we dropped the ball. We didn't take the time to lease train him. Had he been lease trained, uh, we could have made sure when we were moving around that he was on a leash. If the door was going to be open to the van, we could clip the, you know, the leash on him. Um, and that's a place where we dropped the ball. Um, microchipping, um, I'm not sure it would have done any good in this case, but microchipping, absolutely if you've got a runner and you really want to take them on the road you probably are i mean there's no probably about it you want to microchip them okay so we've got that out of the way and i really appreciate your be, being so honest and open and, and willing to talk about it it's no worries i think it's going to help an awful lot of people out there with their cats make these decisions uh, so let's move on you have cats okay. that have been happily with you for two years now and now you're a new cat with your daughter and uh, tell us how you the, go through the mechanics of having a cat in a van. Where do you put the box? How do you keep it clean? How do you feed them? How do you deal with uh, all those things? Well, so, the litter box is the litter box is best to keep uh, by the door. You want to be able to access it and empty it frequently. I do mine at least once a day. Um, I don't keep it anywhere near my head. I keep it on the opposite end of the van where my head is going to be because my cat likes to go to the bathroom uh, and defecate in the night. And I don't want to be woken up by that smell. Um, I just use a clay clumping litter um, and you, I have a little broom and I have to sweep and, and change the litter and sweep the, the front area out because the litter tracks. I guess the next, uh, following that topic, one step before then, the, the pooping, is the eating so have you had uh any suggestions on feeding your cat uh is it different living in a van feeding your cat well i people feed their cats differently um i i pr i am prone to free feed uh it's usually not recommended to free feed for cats um but when you've got multiple cats it's i don't know it's easier for me and maybe i'm lazy um but i free feed them um I use, um, right now I'm using Science Diet um, because my daughter's cat is fat and my, my cat is very, very thin. And they make a food that is made for um, all weights. So um, it doesn't make a cat fatter, thinner, you know, it's kind of balanced. Um, so I, I spend a little more money on cat food than a normal human probably would. Um, the main thing with me is making sure that it's healthy for them and making sure they throw up as little as possible because cats are prone to throw up hairballs and sometimes they have some sensitive stomachs moving around in the van sometimes can make them uh have a little more sensitivity um so the food i make sure i give them a good quality food i don't know that that's necessary for everybody but it's a choice that i made right um, and I guess one of the really the single biggest issues every pet owner has to face with the dog or ca uh, cat is heat. So, yeah. uh, and that's the question I get most of all, I've got a dog or a cat, how do I deal with the heat? So um, what have you figured out about that? You know, that was, that was my big, that was the big thing. I, I knew that I that I wanted to live in this van. And it was like, my, it was everything after I read your, I read your book, like in 2015, I think it was. And I was like, oh, I need a van. And so I, um, the cats, cats being safe in the van during the summer was my concern in the winter. I don't worry. Uh, but in the summer, the heat can kill an animal very easily. So I've taken a lot of precautions. I, I have a passenger van, so I have windows all throughout. And uh, I had those limo tinted. I can still see out, which is what I wanted. I wanted, I wanted surround sound when I go camping. When I'm in the forest, I want surround sound of the trees. I want to be able to see everything, the stars and everything. So I have all the windows I wanted, but I had them limo tinted. Um, and then under my bed, because my bed, my van is very uh, is a very rudimentary build right now. Uh, it, as in no build, <laughs> it still has this, the, the panel siding and everything on it. Um, I, my bed is on Rubbermaid containers. And so I have a spot underneath the bed, um, that I discovered accidentally. It stays very, very cool at, on the floor of the van in the back underneath the bed. 
So I have uh, a container back there that is empty that they can go in and get in and stay cool. So he's extremely cool. If I have chocolate, I can put it in a container under the bed, even on a hot day, and it won't melt. Yeah, just so long as you treat them like your children and like yourself. You're, Absolutely. You're, your life depends on their health and safety and your well-being, on their well-being. And if you treat them that way, then it works out in the end. And, and one other thing, cats, and I think dogs shed too. I've had dogs. I, you know, I have my friend, I have a really, really good friend that I spent. Um, I think, you know, her actually, um, that I spent the summer with in San Diego, my first summer and, uh, her dog shed a lot. And the one thing that people need to be aware of is you're going to, you're living in a small space. You're going to have a lot of hair. <laughs> yes. <laughs> you're, you, if you, if you have struggles dealing with a lot of hair in an apartment, you're going it, to, it's going to be way worse in a van. <laughs> So there's just going to be a lot of hair and I, I keep, I keep a roller in two or three places <laughs> in the van so I can roll myself and I can roll the seats and everything else because it just, it's hairy. Yes. Yeah. I've always had dogs and uh, yeah, it's hairy. Always. <laughs> I, 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 I'll move something and in the little corner I'll find uh, gobs of dog and cat hair that have accumulated there. And it doesn't matter how often I go into that corner and clean it out. But next <laughs> time, there will be a great big gob of dog hair uh, in, in there. Yep. And I did, actually, a surprising amount. And I find my own hair everywhere. So, uh, uh, same. But, yeah, hair's, hair's the way of life and, uh, if you have yeah. a bath in a van. Uh, and I'm assuming you, your cats are not declawed? Uh, no, I, I, I decline. I think uh, I'm, my personal belief is that declawing is, is not terribly humane because they cut off their knuckles. Um, so I have to clip claws. I get scratched a lot. I have a lot of scratches and, um, my seats are covered, uh, because my cats, um, my cats claw at them. I've got, <laughs> I've got a hole in each one of them that they have successfully clawed. So, um, that's one thing you have to be aware of. If they don't have something, um, to claw on, they'll find something to claw on. And you need to keep their claws cut short and you need to have some sisal rope or something for them to scratch. And, and, uh, I didn't at first and my seats paid the price. Yeah. But now you brought in uh, something for them to, to scratch and they're okay. Yeah. The sisal rope is you, the best with cats. And I think uh, pretty much anyone who has a cat knows this. If you get a, a board, you can get a board that has sisal rope wrapped around it. You just rub it really well with catnip and you sit it down and they're, they'll, they'll just automatically go to that every time. Yeah. They won't, they won't scratch anything else. Well, so folks, I hope you got something great out of this. I know a lot of you love cats and you want to take them and you can, um, you just have to be go into it knowledgeable and think everything through. And so, Devin, thank you so much for the information you've shared and your openness and honesty. I think you've helped a lot of people. Well, it's not a problem. I'm happy to help. I appreciate you and all you do for the community. And I think anything we can do to help uh, each other is really important. Thank you. Yeah, I, I think we've done some real good work here. So, folks, thanks for watching. I hope you got something out of this video. If you did, like us on YouTube, hit that thumbs up button and we'll talk to you later. FromWheelsAlliance.org. Together, we are changing lives.